du jour. There's a scene in St. Indina Date where we're working, um, the, the two diners are sat across each other and then suddenly there's a sort of jump of dimension where they're watching, I wanted it to be two diners but it was just two figurines, two figurines on a first date as well and because we're working with the bylaw, what we're struggling with is trying to get the voices to sound exactly like they're coming from each figurine. So at the moment we've got the left and right, what we're struggling to get is the right, what, what the voice should sound like, we're struggling with that. So that's part of the whole dinner date, but then we've, we've kind of come together as a group to sort of settle on that idea and mix it with other ideas that we had yesterday. And it's not so that's where we're at. We're not working necessarily on the bit that's no. in the prototype. No, no, no. It's not at all. Yeah. So we're not going to replace it. Okay, 
now that we've met on this square, we know it's over here somewhere. Yes. But we can't just meet. We, but I think we can meet here. Like I think I have the tools to meet you here or here or here. Do you? And like, yes, I can meet you here. And oh, so I see. Ooh, and so that's a hand of cards. So yeah. So each turn is about trying to figure out where you can meet, meeting there, getting information, getting close. That would be a possible route. And that way you're five turns. Five turns max. Because. But you can also say every time you meet, you get ooh, uh, two more times. Because oh, you get like a bit of hope and you get a bit of like... Or you may get more cards. If you're starting to go that route, right? You say, can you... Do you have what you need to meet in the square? And it's like, well, I have these. This is very good. So, is losing um, rubber banded? Like, do you get help when you're losing? Or do you get further punished when you're losing and you get help when you're winning? Like, do you want a snowball to victory? Or do you want a rubber band to victory? Um, and that's another... So, are failures helpful? Or are they hurtful when you're dating? I think that question would be easier to answer if you were more about the mechanics, because I think it's dependent on the right mechanics. So well, we'll adjust the mechanics to fit our metaphor. So we know we have an obvious mechanic, three, three squares. Each player gets three squares to move. Right. Wait, so as a distance? Yeah. No, it's not far enough. Look how big this board is. You can say five. But the, but you don't want them to be able to make it in one move. No. So because they have to calculate the trajectory that gets them to the square from the exact number of moves that they have. They can't use less. So that's a challenge already. It's very calculating. Too calculating? I don't know. Dates are pretty calculating. <laughs> so. And I like, I'm like, this, this is my arc that I can do. And you're here. If you miss, with an arc, there's always two points that you can meet. Right? And there we go, two decisions. Do we meet here or here? Right? Uh, so if movement is like, like a, you choose your distance on the string, and then you draw your line, and then choose a point to meet. Right? This becomes the choice that the group makes. And the other choice is also distance. So like I could have chosen to go longer. They have to go there, but you don't move there. If they have a limited number of moves, not together on a square, that you're sabotaging the other person. It has to be hidden. Um, boy check can put a card in. And the idea is to have both pieces end up in a space on the board that is the winning space, the right place at the right place. And through play and the mechanics that we haven't quite determined yet, players will move towards each other and learn whether they're getting closer or further away from the space which they should both be on. So in one prototype version, for instance, they would end up on a square together and then we would tell them, no, the square is to the left of where you are. Sort of like international golf boxing. And so they keep finding new ways they can get together in a different square and learn more about it. To be a metaphor of dating conversations as well as a romantic relationship over time. Mm -hmm. And we have thoughts that this will be a physical game, perhaps, with balls on a tray with magnets, or it will be uh, a more strategic game using pieces you move by hand given restrictions and constraints. Or questions and answers. Or questions and answers that get vetted yeah. for value, right? Mm -hmm. So we're still piecing together which of the three modes we want. Suit, but right now trying to get down to how likely should it be to win, how long should it take, and given these constraints that we're putting on it, that will force certain mechanics to be more suitable than others. And the, the idea is to take that piece out of the dinner date prototype, sort of narrative or fictional poetic qualities of the dinner date prototype to see how well that can travel. We don't know quite know where we're going to play it yet, but those things. We love to play those things. <laughs> uh, I think maybe it was something we had to run. I think maybe the weakness. 
premise of our game is the spectators that it'll be mildly interesting to watch the lights and the sound. But maybe without knowing something about the questions, it's not that interesting. I don't know. Something we can think about. So it is important for me to know all of that about how audiences would work because of how we're tied into the conference. So we're not expecting masses of people. We're trying, we are already masses of people. So we're just trying to see if we keep them you know, numbers manageable for what's been what will be a tricky lead into the conference, i.e. Like we're in the residency and we're working on dinner date and we're doing it. Given, given the numbers as no, we're not going to be dealing with more than like fours and fives. Exactly. Sure. Like that, I think that's what it's yeah. not like crowds of No, so. no. But what it means is that if you do want spectators, we wouldn't do something like let's all play at the same time because we need a crowd. So I'd say, okay, all people are in that game. Right. Well, but if you all say we don't need a crowd, nobody needs a crowd, no. then it's all rotated. Right. And, and I mean, we just have to have a crowd. I mean, we just have to have a crowd. And then who's the dinner date? No, no, no. I think that's the most important thing. I like the idea of the dark crowd standing around. That's like a space for the audience where you just pick a rainbow or a signature. Yes, we tend to be in that crowd. In the place. The dark room. That's a huge amount of information, actually. It's too much. Can't do it. You can't be at a distance away from your spot. Because you now know that my spot is never going to be in here. All right? So that's not allowed. So distance can't be a thing. And if you want to win... You would just go next to it. You would just go next to it and stay there for multiple turns. So the question is, do you play it once? And does it say a lot? And if you do hack it the first turn... Even if you just have positive, negative, and like sample phrases from a date, mm -hmm. which would lead you to go one way or the other, yeah. and it, the, the player just chooses to read from a menu, right. which of the phrases 